Oi, is that a bit of rain coming our way? Good thing I brought me umbrella out. <laughs> 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 Boom, downpour. That's all they say. The say no more. <laughs> Enough said there. Welcome to the Kindred Spirit Podcast, a show all about the board game Spirit Island. Here we'll talk about analytics and strategies within the game, as well as a plethora of other topics that can be found within it. Today, we truly close out the last part of the last adversary of our series. We get to all of the data from the yes. survey and all of your comments. I can't wait to hear how good Base River did. Oh dear. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's just get right to it. <laughs> Okay, let's get down to business. We got a top five, we got a bottom five, we got some honorable mentions, and we got some comments. It's going to take some time to get through it, and we got a lot to get through. Jump in. Let's, let's go. head on in. I am so happy to announce that for our bottom five, we don't have a single tie. Whoa. Which is amazing. I love it. You hate ties. I do. What's the worst when you're hearing these things on the audio medium and it's like, man, I have to remember all these things. Remember in our all stars, they'd be like, and this spirit, and this spirit, and, and this, this one, and, and this one, and this one. And oh my word, what we had 13 <laughs> yeah. in Scotland. In we Scotland. Had 13 yeah. in tie, the top five. In the top five. Oh my gosh. So no and ties. We actually have a legitimate five for the bottom five. Okay. Anyway, so that's nice. All right. At 31%. Wow. Starting off with a pretty high number there. People hate Sometimes these Sometimes we start with 27% or 18% or 14%, but here we're starting off at 31. Wait till you see where we end up at. <laughs> <laughs> At 31% of all the votes in fifth place came Nightmare. Okay. Good old bringer. Can't remove stuff. Can't kill stuff. And Dahan ain't gonna do it nearly as good as they used to. Yeah, nothing's leaving the board. I'll correct myself. They can remove stuff if they there find a major go. power that remove has it. Remove stuff, yeah, sure. Yeah, they can't destroy stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel it. Yeah, the <laughs> yep. reticence to play as a character who can't really kill things. It's scary, especially against is, England yeah, and all those builds, scary. yeah. Yep, I feel it. In fourth place, at 33%, we have Travel River. Travel River? Yeah. <laughs> Travel River here in fourth place for bottom five. We were talking before this. Remember when they were the hot item? <laughs> I remember when Travel River was like, ah! Everyone loved yeah. Travel River. It was getting on the bandwagon for Travel River. And like, it's like when the new kid the... moves in the town from California and they're yeah. really cool. That's <laughs> right. They got the hairdo and yeah. everything, the surfboard. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. Wow. Mighty have fallen. Well, let's see here. I can get sacred sites. Okay. <laughs> I can move to Han around. I can move to Han around. I can around, push bad but... guys around. Uh... Well, yeah, controlling ain't going to be so great because you don't want to get seven buildings in a land and stopping explorers isn't going to really do anything. But fear generation. Yeah, crap. But I got massive <laughs> flat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, two damage to all invaders is only good against the explorers. <laughs> I did two damage to everyone. Oh. Nice. Nice. That does nothing. The building's just... Anyway, so... <laughs> so anyway, what was I saying? Completely unfazed it's by that. Yeah. Completely unfazed. Definitely makes sense. You know, if you can maybe get your Dahan attacks yeah. and massive flooding in the same spot, but good. you're doing a ton of work. Yeah. Hey, I can get one bonus damage in the coast. Oh, <laughs> sweet summer child. <laughs> oh, man. Good luck on the coast. <laughs> they start Just, with extra uh, cities on the coast. Yeah. Next. <laughs> anyway, number three. <laughs> Writing's on the wall for that one. Hey, we called it. And 38%, our bronze medalist for the bottom five, is Finder of Paz Unseen. Oh, Finder, poor baby. Yeah. Are you really shocked, though? So there's almost a duality with Finder where yeah. adjacency, you can negate that with all mm. those isolates. Super good. That's awesome. That's no, one thumbs up. No destroying powers. Oh. And also, no fear. Oh. It's like two thumbs down. Okay. <laughs> oh, and you slapped on the wrist for any offense you do. Yeah. Do. So, ah, well, it's not too bad. We'll oh, and grouping that. up people loses you the game. 
It literally does. <laughs> so, so even when you do find your briny deep that's crazy expensive, it's only killing six um, buildings <laughs> at the most. Yeah. <laughs> at the most. At the most. Unless you have a threshold in which right. maybe I hope so. <laughs> right, right. So, so that we see it. Yeah. Look, it's all these characters that uh mm, control controlling. Huh. <laughs> I wonder why. No. <laughs> At sixty one. What a jump. Wow. Wow. Went from thirty one to thirty three to thirty eight to sixty one. Nearly double. Wow. Yeah. Base River. Oh no. <laughs> so nice they came back twice. Oh, man. <laughs> River Base again. River has <laughs> Never ever showed up in any of the bottom five. Of the bottom five. Beach here. What a garbage spirit. <laughs> so terrible. <laughs> right. We have literally never seen River once, and now we have River twice. Poor River. Oh no. England. You were talking about it for <laughs> how many episodes? Yeah, how many times? Now it's your turn to finally talk about why. England is their kryptonite. Yeah. Adjacency builds extra oh. health. It oh. might be just honestly the extra health might be the ticket yeah and what well, i would also say the adjacency build yeah, adjacency. really got some here's another spirit that likes grouping up invaders can't yeah. do that can't do it and also no fear generation we nope. saw in our game how desperately you need fear <laughs> there's so much extra fear you have well, to earn you can get fear if you kill a bunch of people massive flow oh. <laughs> anyway number two <laughs> Anyway, yeah, no, I feel it. What's there really more to say? Control spirit with no fear, and they do yeah. two damage they don't destroy. Yep. You know, we're rifling through the bottom five already, but that's just the matchup. It's a simple matchup. It is. And it's hard. England is really simple, but it makes sense. Yeah. And then at 63%, you know, this is really fitting. <laughs> It really is. It's poetic. Ryan. It is. No, don't say it. <laughs> don't say the words. <laughs> don't let it leave your lips. <laughs> well. No. At 63%. Not like this. The gold medalist. <laughs> For the worst spirit. Is base shadow. No, no. No. <laughs> the champion of the suck. Here we are. <laughs> I'm going to push back. I'm pushing back, dang it. I'm pushing back. How's that innate that never triggers or controls people? <laughs> that when it does do destroy, yeah. Oh, wait, it wasn't destroy. It was damage. No. <laughs> Crops wither. Crops wither, dang it. <laughs> but you downgrade someone into a town. The number of buildings stays the same, no. John. Oh, no. <laughs> Unless it was town. Don't yeah, explore. Okay. That's better. That's better. They do do fear. <laughs> they do do fear, which is great. But yeah, I would say with base, it's tough. You would need like a carry spirit. I, yeah. It can be done with like an ocean yeah. or something. But yeah. by themselves or true solo, that'd be tough. Yeah. Hopefully you can pull the right major. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> Good luck. You know, some people have commented asking why is base shadows even a votable option in these things? Well, we need to get the numbers and we need to get the actual finished set of data, okay? So we started it with them in there. We get the emotion. Yes, we get it too, but we got to complete the set. I will say if I am like forced with one of these five or something, I would rather a base shadows than a base river. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I can, can destroy it, things. Yeah. I can go for majors. I can yep. still do fear. Yep. No, I honestly, I think that's actually a good statement. So, but yeah, yep. this bottom five, we're not surprised. No. I'm Especially not with surprised. number one. Yeah, we're Base Shadows, they've gotten the participation award. Sure. You know, they've done their time. But in the as bottom we've stated five. many a time, use an aspect. Use an aspect <laughs> for them, please. But. You know, they've never gotten gold for really? the worst. They've never been yeah, the worst? They've never been the worst. <laughs> it's just about time. It was their moment. <laughs> we all knew. Moment. We all knew this would come. We all knew they were biding their time. They That's made right. most of the bottom fives. Yes, they did. <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and turn that frown upside down. Let's get to the honorable mentions. The honorable mentions. The top five. So first off, we have a tie. Yeah, we got a few ties here for the top five and for the honorable mentions. But thankfully, our first and second place are all by themselves. I like a tie that. for the rest. But you know what? I like I that. think I'm okay with that. Me too. For the honorable mention, three-way tie, 23% of all the voters hmm? said that Fangs? Oh. Keeper oh. and Vengeance. Wow. Very interesting. 
Yes. Each one of them has a very different skill set on various things, yet there is still within them a lot of flexibility. You know, Vengeance can still do a ton of damage if there's Blight out there. They're not doing extra Blight. No, it's just standard Blight, but you can allow, in your gameplay style, Blight to come out there if you just do nothing. True. Which is fine. Disease is actually really good against them because you can stop builds, but... Or let them through. Yeah, or you can let them through. Because if they build twice, that's two fear for allowing Mm -hmm. two builds to go through by letting that disease. That stacks. Get that fear going. Get that fear going, and then that extra damage helps you against the extra health. You can stop Ravages. Eh. It's fine. It's decent, I guess. Yeah, but okay. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, I see it. Keeper, the exploration stopping, eh, yeah. not so great. So, honestly, you'd probably be using it more for Sacrosanct Wilderness than you stack would be that for... Stack damage. Yeah, Smart, get the damage Ryan. stack. Yeah. And then you're just someone who can go crazy with... Like, it's honestly more surprising to me how few times Keeper has showed up in the top five. Seriously. Second time. It's crazy. It's I know. I think people generally know the power level of Keeper, and okay. they just choose to avoid it. Don't vote for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel it. So, Keeper, great counterattacking defender there. They can prevent, but in the form of uh, stopping explorers, yeah. but that doesn't really do a whole lot Because England still builds. Thankfully, I do think you can get a snowball rolling in the early game when they're not doing the high immigration build, and you may be able to buy some time, yeah. maybe... And Towering Wrath is good damage yeah, once you get that going. Is good. Yeah. Yep, and you can get a ton of majors that you can sling at bad guys. And you can just yeah earn a ton of energy and throw majors at people. So you can just chuck it at people. That's always good. Like we yeah. said last time, having majors slung out at the bad guys, always good. Especially against England. And Keeper has that platform yep, to chuck it. Yep, that's a good point. In. Fangs? Hey, Fangs can be a major power user. We talked about that in the Fear episode. Yes. They have a no cap damage on their beasts, so long as they can get them out there, of course, yeah. with the damage done there. Not bad. Oh, yeah. Prey on the Builders. Huge. Really good here. A little bit of everything. You got the fear, you got the prevention, you got the damage. And England doesn't do tricky things with Blight, so yeah. that's always good. Even though they do Blight once, right. you can gather it or remove it, you find a Blight card. have better than usual control, too. Oh. Control ain't so great against England, but you can throw a ton of towns out of the lands that they just went in. Yep. Pretty good. And Pretty into well. different directions. Yeah. Careful though, because you don't want to, you know, do that whole mm. run my camel <laughs> thing. But honestly, I see it's it. the same. Not bad. And I'm happy that Fangs is yeah. appearing on the Arbal Mentions. Same. Yeah. Same. Here we go. Top five. This is the last time we do a top wow, five. Wow, top five against An one adversary. of the considered the toughest episodes. Yeah. If you made this top five, yeah. good on you, spirits. Honestly, looking at who we have here, interesting oh. collection of people, oh. I think. My Spoilers. Opinion, yeah, let's get into it. Three-way tie at fifth place. 25% of all of you who voted said that Volcano, looming high, Makes sense. belongs here. Good damage, Badlands. Spread of Rampant Green, yeah, well, yeah. always good. <laughs> Prevention. And Shroud of Silent Mist. What? Wait, you misspoke. <laughs> really? <laughs> what? Of all the times for Mist to not show up on a bottom five when they've done so so many times in the past. Right. And to show up on a top five, it's here. Against the most difficult adversary. Huh. Huh. You know, the bonus health, it's like, oh man, it's going to take four ever to go ahead and tick away all the necessary health to kill them because they can only do one damage at a time. Yet still, you can milk all those bad guys you for can. fear just as easily. That's a lot of energy you're getting. And, and you can keep that health lowered, right? Yeah. You can still damage each invader. And when there are seven or eight <laughs> invaders in every single land, That's a- that has never looked as good as it does now. And Mist is one of the top fear getters in this game. Seriously. And against England, that's important. Yep. You need fear. You need fear. You don't want double builds on high immigration. I'm not saying it's going to be the easiest thing that you've ever seen. No. But still, damage to each invader on adversaries that spam the board full of a ton of people. Yeah. Not bad. Out of 35 playable options, they made yeah. fifth. Yeah. Wow. They beat out Keeper wow. and Fangs. Wow. What? Impressive. How about that? Green? Hey, you can prevent builds. Prevent. Yes. And ravages. Yes, it's true that Creeper's Turn and Mortar will be pretty difficult here, but you can still prevent builds. And you grow so quick against I'm say slow it again. England. You can prevent builds. Which is huge. <laughs> which is huge. And you grow so fast against yeah. England. Which is nice. Which is nice. So you can go for majors. Yep. You can yep. be a major power spirit. You have your energy boosting yep. growth option. Yep. You can still take out towns. <laughs> 
That's always good. Taking out of town. <laughs> it's fear. Yeah, it's fear, and it gets one of their... Overgrown at night. Yep, there you Free go. Free fear. All the time. You can set up for Dahan. You can defend. And three Dahan can take out a city and yeah. something. Yeah. You have things to work with. Yes. Which is good. Volcano, I think, actually is probably the best here. Yeah. Eh, maybe on par with green. Okay. Maybe on par with green. Best for the... Uh, well... Damage and badlands? Maybe I should redact my statement, because Mist can also do really good on damage. That's true. How about this? I very much Agreed. am okay with them being in fifth place, because okay. their damage that they can deal with those big explosions could be really, really nice. But they can also get badlands out there. Which, which is, is really, really, really nice. nice. You're killing Dahan? Eh. They weren't doing you a ton anyway. Sure, they weren't doing against much. Against England, And England much. allows you to stack that tower, that volcano, because yeah. it takes some time to yep. build that much. Not going to be the best matchup, but it's going to be a pretty decent one. It's workable. Honestly, look at all of these things. Whether it be reasons for a bottom five or reason for a top five or honorable mention. They're so simple with England. Yeah. It's so straightforward. Like, we're just going through the numbers here. <laughs> it's great. It is. Just at its base essence, there's a lot of people. And I can do a lot of damage to a lot of people. Cool. I can stop builds. Cool. cool. I can do one damage to each invader. Cool. cool. I can do a lot of fear. Cool. <laughs> like, it's so simple. It you is. know what I mean? England like, is very simple. Right on. In fourth place now, at 28%, up three percentage, we have another three-way tie with Immense Lightning. Yes. Shifting Memory. Oh. And Bringer. Oh. Yes, Nightmare Wait comes in again. Bringer was already on the other list. <laughs> Once again, we have someone on bottom five and top five. I think this is Memory's first top five appearance. Is it really? Yes. How about that? Huh. <laughs> Look at that. Immense Lightning. Memory. These are major power slingers. Yeah. They can just go on a slugfest with majors with the bad guys. Even Bringer can do pretty decent with majors. They can. Yeah. I didn't say anything to this when Nightmare showed up in the bottom five. But Bringer can still terrify a lot of people. Guess what happens if you do a briny deep as Nightmare <laughs> in a land with, oh, I don't know, six buildings, five cities, yeah. something like that? A ton of fear. You can get a ton of fear. You basically just go for a fear victory, and yep. it's a sprint. Will it happen every game? Heck no. Can it happen? Yes. yes. Is it awesome when it does? Heck yes. Is it better if Ocean's playing with Bringer? Heck yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to our bronze medalists. Only two. Here we are at 39%. Ooh, okay, jump. We have another first appearance, but base lightning. Lightning again. Lightning again. Shows up. Destroyed the original pe- yeah. counter to England. So says the book. Said that. So says the book. Along with Serpent. Serpent? Serpent's first time in the top five. So now we have two utility characters, Memory and Serpent, yeah. first times. Well, That's cool. Memory more because of the major power oh, slinging. Okay. <laughs> and Serpent probably because of the major power oh, Okay. <laughs> Not for utility? <laughs> sure, it's helpful, but it's fine. It helps. But yeah. Base Lightning can destroy buildings. The original loophole. <laughs> the original loophole. Hey, they got bonus health. I can destroy you regardless of how much health you but have. But I have four health. Destroy Boom. means you die yep. regardless of how much health you have. You could have had 10 hundred million. I still destroy you. Boop. Wasn't what they intended, but that's how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> we play with loopholes. But now we live in the real world. <laughs> and we have Habsburg. We have Habsburg. <laughs> Base Lightning, yeah. Dedicated building attacker. And England Basically does not do. care about their explorers. Neither does Lightning. Raging so Storm. <laughs> Raging Storm. First forgettable power. When paired with Vanish Softly Away. Oh, really that's good. Great. That's right. But yeah, you're blowing up buildings. Yep, Shattered Homesteads, Thundering Destruction. There yeah. you go. Hey, even when you were playing as immense, the Thunder Destruction yeah, was, was great. That. Yeah, I was triggering that. That was really good. Serpent with that snake quake yeah. can work wonders. Just blow up the island. Yeah. <laughs> it's phenomenal. I think 57 damage was our record, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's really good. And like 14 Oh, lands. and by the way, you get 12 energy a turn. What can you do with that? <laughs> Pretty much anything you want. For claim two, <laughs> yeah. elements at your disposal, <laughs> you're fine. You can just sling it. Alrighty. We've loitered long enough. It's time to now, actually address this. What's interesting, these two were fighting neck and neck. neck. and neck. Blow for the blow. The whole time the survey was active, these two went back, back. and forth. There was almost a daily and forth thing. and back. They were tied yes. for the longest time. One was time. two ahead, then the other one ahead of them. They are separated by two 
percent. One at fifty six. One at fifty eight. Oh. One of them actually edged out the other. But who? Who did it? I know you at home know which two are left. I oh, want yeah. you to think. Yeah. Who do you think it was? Yeah. I'm going to watch the clock. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to guess who you think actually got silver and who you think actually got gold. Make your choice yet? <laughs> I feel like we're playing like Blue's Clues or like Door of the Explorer. <laughs> Find the door. Find the stupid thing, yeah. kids. <laughs> Where is it? It's is under it the couch. couch. It's, it's under, under the couch. couch. <laughs> yeah. In second place, our silver medalist, Ocean's oh. Hungry oh. Grass. Oh. Oh. oh, my goodness. I thought they were going to get first. Did you really? I did. Yeah. I did. I thought it was going to be Ocean. We talked about it last week. I thought yeah, it was going to be Ocean. Did. Yeah, we did. Ocean came in at 56, 2% behind. But yes, Ocean can just straight up just drown. drown. Just drown them all. Straight up drown towns. It's great. Allow other peoples to drown. Remember, now River's good. <laughs> yeah. Remember how base Earth had access to free defense? Yeah. Well, Ocean simply has access to free damage. Get them in there, bloop, bloop, yep, they die. Sure, they might not die immediately, but they die all the same. We have never required or needed or wanted or desired a trash compactor more <laughs> than we have right now. Against England and all that extra health. Not only do we have a ton of bad guys, but they have bonus health. Is, and they don't swim back! And they don't swim back, Rush or <laughs> Habsburg or something. <sighs> if you look at the bottom five and pair them with Ocean, that's a winnable game. Seriously. Nightmare and Ocean, River Ocean, Finder Ocean, even Shadows Ocean. Travel, River, <laughs> yeah. Ocean. Yep. All winnable games. Just push them in there. Pair them all with Ocean. You win. Probably. Yep. You'll probably sure, win. Sure, you have problems on your inland land, but guess what? You can get there. Your friends will be pushing them to the coast, hopefully. Yep. And so the value of this garbage disposal is so much higher in intensity yes. than the detriment of your inland land discrepancies. Yeah. Now River can can destroy. Yeah, and it's phenomenal. Now Nightmare can destroy. Hey, didn't they start with an additional city and an additional town on the coast? Oh, bummer. Where can Ocean only go? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> More energy for Grab them. It. Oh, yep. am I generating fear with pound ships and the splinters all oh, the time? Oh, wow. One of the best fear nates in the game? How about that? How about that? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Yet they were beat. Yeah, Thunder Speaker got ah, gold. <laughs> oh, it is well deserved. <laughs> yeah, Thunder yeah, Speaker yeah, with well the done. GG. Thunder Speaker, the best attacker, arguably, in the game with town popping and consistent town popping and 65 <laughs> damage attacks. Remember when you were saying that offense is kind of neutered against England? Yeah. Well, yeah, in the same way that we've said throughout the whole series, when defense looks bad, you can still count on downpour to be the exception. And when offense looks bad, you can still count on <laughs> Thunderspeaker to be the exception to that rule as well. Last week I was saying you have to go for majors, like big damage majors. Oh, that's built into Thunderspeaker's kit called Man of... shame if I started with one. <laughs> the Manifestation of Power and Glory, which has no damage cap. No. I mean, you can easily do 30, 40, 50, 50 60, 60, 70. Whatever you want it to be. Yeah. Just don't lose your Dahan. Just don't lose your Dahan. <laughs> don't do it. But the thing is, is you can keep your ball of Dahan alive if you congregate them into a big <laughs> clumped up land and then you just kill everything there. And then so on now, to the next one. Yeah, then you move on to the next one. Oh no, the adjacency built. All right, I'll just get back there. <laughs> and you just go round and round Thunder and circles. Thunderspeaker almost wants more targets. They want things to blow sure. up because they have so much damage. Sure. Yeah. Remember when we were saying how push has come to shove. This is where you bust out all the stops. Yes. Thunder Speaker has all the damage Even stops. better than Volcano or Lightning mm. or a Serpent. These people can do big damage. Thunder Speaker can do it better. Yep. Just flat out. Yep. It's true that a Snake Quake would be great, and it's true that Firestorm would be great. I still think that Wildfire could have, if not yeah. should have, showed up a little bit in the top five. But still, I'm not going to complain at all that Thunder Speaker got gold. Their second gold medal. They're like Michael Phelps over here, <laughs> congregating Another so medal. many medals, so whether many it be silvers fives. or golds or, you know, whatnot. How many bottom fives did they show up on? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, so there is your honorable mention and your top five 
At 23%, Fangs, Keeper, and Vengeance. In 5th place, at 25%, Mist, Green, Volcano. At 28%, in 4th place, Immense Lightning, Memory, and Bringer. Bronze Medalist, 39%, Serpent, and Base Lightning. Silver Medalist, at 56%, Oceans, Hungry Grasp. And at 58%, the gold medalist, Thunderspeaker, yet again wow. reigns supreme. I really thought Ocean was going to get it. Yeah? I was kind of cheering for Ocean. Really? Yeah. As a control player, I always love having an Ocean on my team. <laughs> it's like a shadow of a river. I was for Thunderspeaker, but what if, like, for the first time ever, I voted for Thunderspeaker to, like, tweak it? <laughs> Wait, did I you didn't, do it? I didn't. Because we don't vote in our polls. But that would have been great if that, I did. That it was hilarious. you. The bottom five, 31% Nightmare. 33% in fourth place, Travel River. 38% for third place, Finder. Silver Medal is 61%, Base River. River a second time. And then Base Shadows just owning their true <laughs> inner nature. They accept their calling at 63% with the gold. Base Shadows. Bottom five is basically control. That's yeah, what it honestly. Is. Seriously, control yeah. Spirits. We got control. We have River twice. <laughs> we have Shadows. We got Nightmare. All control focused spirits. So let's go ahead and look at what you all had to say. Hepsbox says, the time has finally come. It's what? time to take on England. <laughs> Hello, all the chemistry is fine. <laughs> You're speaking to yourself. No, 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 no. Red Revenge comes in and says, any spirits that can destroy towns and cities with ease have an advantage versus England. Looks at Ocean. Hmm. Any spirits that use damage to remove invaders will struggle here or have a disadvantage. Glances at Fang. <laughs> yep. I'm glad that they use the term have a disadvantage because it's definitely slighted against them. It's not impossible. Find a great early Angry Bears or, sure. like we said, Sea Monsters. Sea Monsters. It can be done. Get yeah. a bunch of beasts out there. It can be done. I don't think it's Go the best track. matchup. But hey, they made the top five. But yeah, if you can have the destroy effect, you're Gucci. Floham comes in to say, oh, England. <laughs> I feel like it's not just the feeling, the yeah. feels right there. Uh, oh, England. I've taken on England six in both solo and solo two-handed. Solo-wise, I have victories with Thunderspeaker, Green, and Ocean. Those all make sense. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried to take on this adversary at level six with any Jagged Earth Spirits yet. Oh. Mm. Thunderspeaker is a tricky one to win with. Yes, we all know the crazy amounts of damage, but events can really mess up plans with Thunderspeaker. Losing to Han from events, or even events having you push to Han, that's true. Push to we Han had around. that a few times. We did have that round. Yeah. Push the Dahan you just set up for a counterattack is frustrating. Mm. Green, I was able to win through fear victory. Oh, nice. nice. Green can tap into fear. You definitely can. But only pull this off once. Ocean, I first time beat England 6, and this was a fun matchup. This one requires luck, too, with what you draft major-wise and miners to help you deal with those inland lands. Mm. Jagged Earth-wise, I can see those spirits who are very offensive or fear-based to have a favorable matchup with England. So I can see Vengeance, Volcano, Lure, Mist, many mines having an advantage against England 6. Mm. Two-hand-wise, I've been having great success with England 6 with Wildfire and Green. Wildfire's yes. Flame Fury helps Greens and Hate yes. become even more relevant to yes. Green and helps it stay consistent. Oh, yeah. Green's overgrow can help to avoid the high immigration, and obviously green helping wildfire place presence. Mm -hmm. Wildfire is an eight of Firestone at yes. its highest tier. Boom. Can just be a game changer. Destroy all, all invaders. Wow. Bam. Infinite damage. Yeah. Shazam. So true, Floham. Yep. Ryan, I am also surprised that... Actually, I think it was our top offense getter in our All-Stars game. Mm -hmm. Didn't get more votes. They got votes. They yeah. didn't make it in the... Top five. Yeah, top yeah. five. I found that interesting also. Would not get. It comes in to say, picking off explorers is almost useless against England <laughs> because they just build regardless. So any spirit with a focus on small damage or explorer movement is at a disadvantage. Yeah, preach. Yeah, yeah. anyone with explorer manipulation. Ugh. For us, we were picking up miners or right. even majors that yep. deal with explorers. They really don't do anything with the explorers. We don't They're care. They're just standard explorers. We didn't care. They did nothing. Yeah. It's all about those buildings. Take Zujin comes in to say, oh. I was also going to suggest Wildfire and Green. So they were commenting off Floham. Mm. They are explosive enough that you can wipe England from one or two inland areas in a two-player game in the first three rounds. Mm. Yeah, these are very fast spirits. They definitely are. Heavily counter their builds with Green and negate their adjacencies for half their board if you're blowing everything up. Easiest and most fun England 6 win I've ever had. Man. Dude, Ryan, we should try that out. 
I love it. Because we were talking about Let's taking that it. duo against every adversary. Yes, I want to. I want to. That sounds fun. Let's do it. It's like our tour across the globe. Yeah. You know, globe trotting trip with those two, just smacking everyone that we I can. I like being supportive, and then you can be supportive back, <sighs> and just let me, because I'm playing green at this scenario. <laughs> but I can also burn people And you can alive. burn everything alive. Yeah. I want to do this. <laughs> Thanks for that comment. You have us hyped now for our next game. Oh, yeah. Aaron comes in, and I love this. Okay. It's so succinct, but it's so perfect. Okay. England goes against my usual play style of shut things down before they get bad, and more like, you can't shut us down. You either need to hit us head on or scare us away. <laughs> yep. Yep. You need to kill them with ridiculous cheese that you found, or scare them. I mean, it really is that simple. They're going to build and build and build. Although, I will say that the new isolate mechanism in Jagged Earth can do wonders Mm. with shutting England down. Finder certainly couldn't handle England solo, but on the right team, Finder actually shines. Moving invaders out of a land and then isolating it to prevent those builds completely takes away any power that England has. For any other spirit, picking up an isolate power against England can really go a long way. Yes, when I was thinking of Finder in the bottom five, I was thinking more of like a solo, but with the right Mm -hmm. team, and you are isolating helping your team out yeah. or helping with range yeah it could work it's the one thing that they have that's good in their kit <laughs> the against one. England yeah yep. the one thing again I'm sorry if I put your any names ask Ralemo about that <laughs> anyway a Creo skin comes in to say Nice. <laughs> My top recommendation against England is Stone's Unyielding Defiance, because with them played well all around, even a land with three cities and three towns will not cause a meaningful blight and will be devastated for even attempting it. Mm. I first bested England 6 solo using Ocean's Hungry Grass, who nice. is simply excellent at destroying overbuilt coasts, mm-hmm. though the majors you draw for Ocean matter a lot. Mm-hmm. Similarly to Ocean, Lightning, Swift Strike, Thunder Speaker, and Lure of the Deep Wilderness are excellent at dealing with towns and cities regardless of their extra health. Lure's first mention. Yeah. We haven't seen them yet. Because they break things down. They do. And Thankfully, they break them down into explorers, yes. which is nice. So no more buildings, which is great. Because Crops Wither goes from city to town. Yeah, you but, downgrade the level. But Lure, just three explorers instead right. of a city. But technically more invaders. But they're not buildings. They're not buildings. So Proud Mighty Capital isn't getting worked on. Lastly, the major power, Jungle Hungers, is quite literally the most powerful Mm. major power against England. Destroying three towns and one city for three energy is amazing. Mm -hmm. As for England's tricky trappings, there are some... (laughs) Tricky trappings. Tricky trappings. Here are some added observations. Turns where high immigration matches the terrain type for Ravage are extremely brutal Mm -hmm. because they build and then Ravage, and the biggest trapping of fighting against England at higher difficulties. Never forget that and begin planning for those turns the moment you explore a land type that also just built. It's almost like Mm -hmm. defending an empty land because you know they're about to build and then Ravage. It's ridiculous. So thank you for that tip, a Creo skin, and thank you for those tips on Jungle Hunger. Such a good mm-hmm. card against England. Honestly, yeah. Because it destroys. I see a lot of back and forth on what actually is mm. the best card against England. Because I was saying last week a lot about remove. I like those yeah. remove ones. Those remove ones are fantastic. Jungle Hungers, I will not contest for being awesome. Because it pen- is a cheaper card, too. It is a cheaper card, but Pent Up Calamity is also ridiculously Ooh. good. Anyway, Equality comes in and says... Shadow, River, Finder, Shroud. Yep. Math checks out. (laughs) Looking at the bottom five. Yeah, they're control spirits. What can we say? We all saw that coming. Yep. Shadows still has some things that they can... Some tools in their kit. Fear, downgrading, can go for majors. Yep. But Finder, like people have been saying, there's still truth to the matchups. That's true. You know, the adjacency can be thwarted by isolation. Shroud of Sign the Mist can still do damage to each invader. Mm -hmm. There's good things to find here within each one of them. That's true. It's not unwinnable, but it will be difficult. Yep. His Oja. <gasps> They're back! They're back! The exotic name. His Oja. His Oja. Or is I it do- His Oja? His Oja. His Oja. Giri toke. Ceviche saigenai. Currently. <laughs> Sorry. Currently, I've only taken on England 6 in pure solo with three spirits. Nani? And one with them. Sharp fangs. Pretty hey! comfortable win on the first try. I went with the quote-unquote aggressive oh! fangs build. So England was never able to build up in its lands. Mm. 
And I did end up getting lucky and drawing Insatiable Hunger of the Swarm. Oh, nice. I always Good. remember that card art of, like, the locust swarming. Oh, I would hate that. Like, in real life. Oh, yeah, I hate, that'd be no, terrifying. No, 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 no. Me and Bugs do not get along. So they, they are admitting they to getting lucky, but with that hey, We got of, fortunate, too, man. We get, you kind of have to against England. Their second spirit where they won with Vengeance went on the second try. Hey. I left pretty much every disease on the board to just milk fear and get higher damage output with its first innate. Totally. That combined yep. with lucky card draws let me focus on both innates at the same time. I got Domesticated Animals Go Berserk. And it requires buildings. Yeah, it does. Which you will definitely have. Speaking of requiring buildings, Ryan, you might remember this. They also pulled Territorial Strife. Oh, hey! Oh. Yeah, baby. Another good card and mm-hmm. vengeance of the dead won me a fear victory nice vengeance of the dead i love that. oh my word Isn't that's that hilarious vengeance oh my word <laughs> pulling vengeance getting vengeance of the dead with extra damage from blight vengeance of the dead is considered the worst card in the game <laughs> you fear. no i love the card it i cool. love it's it like zombies it's like winning with a banana peel it's great no yeah. the card actually has its uses it's, it's just uses. i love it honestly i love it when people say this card is awful and and then someone goes, I'm going to use it anyway, and, and actually uses it. I love Against that. Against England. Defy the meta. I love it. Do it. <laughs> the third spirit they won with was Thunderspeaker. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. One after several tries. Ooh. Manifestation is an amazing power against it England. Is. Yep. But Un- they're not dummy proof. No, they're not. We've said that before, and we'll say it again. It's also Thunderspeaker's weakness. Events can really mess up everything by killing to Han, which yep. is always really bad. Huh. <laughs> How about that? It's almost like you sunk that. We can hear the echoing voices of episode 24 reverberating <laughs> in our head. <laughs> yeah, how about that? But I secured a Terra 3 victory with some lucky to hard card Ooh, Terra draws. 3. I know. No nice. cities? Good on nice. you. Nice. They got Birds Cry Warning, Veil the Night's Hunt, which are all Dahan. Oh, Birds Cry. And Veil the Night's Hunt. Is all Dahan cards. Nice. So, good draws. I thus have one with three high damage spirits. So, I guess spirits like lightning, stone, volcano, yep. wildfire yep. will also be effective. Yeah, stone can be great because there's just simply so many bad guys that you can just send back a lot of the damage. Sure, it won't be equal, but still, you're taking advantage of all the bonus people. Yep. Not at the best exchange rate that we've ever seen, but still really good. So, they came back to say they edited their own comments. Uh oh. Well, it seems like I've won a fear victory <gasps> against England. England 6 with a fourth oh! spirit. Yeah. You want to guess? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go through 35 options. Nah, it's was it this one? Wild. Nope. Was it this one? Nope. Was yeah. it this one? <laughs> All right. I have beaten them with Madness Shadows. Yes. Oh, nicely Madness. done. Nice. With a fear victory. I dig it. And they got tipping point as their blight card. Really? Wow. Well done. Well done. Good on you. Good nicely on you. Did. Yes. And thank you for the comments. Yeah. Peasant comes in and says, <laughs> Yeah, that jump from England 4 to 5 really hurts a lot of spirits that would otherwise be pretty respectable against England. River being the most obvious example. Yeah, so which one was level 5? Level 5 is where they get their local autonomy. Is that the extra health? That's the extra health. Oh, brother. (laughs) Yep. It's true how various matchups can actually change some of the advice. Just from one level. Just from one level that we would be giving from these things. But one helpful note is that these guides, these analysis episodes on all of these adversaries are meant and intended with the context of you fighting a level six adversary. We want to encourage all of you out there to face your nerves and to take on these level six adversaries and to have some advice waiting for you on how to do it. Yes, we know that everyone who's voting isn't necessarily voting for fighting these adversaries against level six, but I want you to know from our end on what we can control, we want you to have as much advice as you can on these level six adversaries. Every adversary survey has always been intended for fighting them at level six. If you want to make it a little bit easier for yourself, Fine. Awesome. 
totally cool. And have, yeah, you can gradually work your way up to level yeah. six. We want to have a resource available to you to help you, Along to the encourage way. you to do it. It might not be something that is enticing to you. It may be something that is terrifying, but you can do it. You can do it. We've done it. It's doable. So many other people have done it. There are veterans here who are helping you with information on how to do it. You got this. That's why we read these comments. It may be hard, but it's worth it. And you can Man, you got this. You got this. You got this. That is why we're doing these analysis episodes. So you can Mm -hmm. take them on at level six. We want to encourage you to take them on at level six because it is incredibly rewarding to do so. And we're just trying to help you get to that point to go through each level. If you want to start level three, that's fine. But we're going to help you along the way to get to level six. And you can fight them at the hardest difficulty. So yeah. At its base level, we haven't gone into at what point at certain levels, certain things against certain adversaries become viable, become less viable. This one is good at England 1 through 4, but this one is bad against England 5+. plus. Yeah, we don't do that because the thing is, is it's intended to be six. And then obviously, if you're not taking six, then you're going to have a little easier of a time here, easier of a time there. And it would take us three hours every episode to tell you when the cutoff or where the cutoff is. For each spirit at each level? Goodness. Yeah. That would take forever. This is meant for the level six Mm -hmm. club. And you can join it. That's the thing. And you can join us at the level six club because we want all of you to join us at the level six club. There's no exclusivity here. You can do it. You got this. It ain't so bad. It's a lot easier. A lot of these adversaries, if you're taking them on at level four or five, you can pretty much take them on at level six anyway. Yep. You got this. And so you can. Yes, you can. I want this to be encouraging. I don't want any of you to walk away from that statement thinking that it's like some sort of opinionated thing or some like elitist click thing. No. My point being is that it's accessible. Yeah. We believe you can do it. Defeating adversaries at level six can be done. Yeah. And we want to encourage you. I want you to see the truth of how easy it actually is. Because once you do it, you're going to realize, wow, I thought it would be harder. Mm -hmm. But it's still Spirit Island. It's still a game that you know and love. And it's still an experience that you should enjoy and that you should experience. And some people, not all of you, but some people don't even want to try. And that's fair because you think that you would hate it. And, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to think about what you know about yourself and how to have fun. But if you haven't even tried it, maybe give it a try. If you have tried it and you said, not for me, Totally fine. Yep, Respect it. Go. I'm talking to the people who've never even tried. Because it's cool to then read the comments like, you guys told me how to play this spirit, and now I did mm-hmm. defeat at level six. We love reading yep. those battle reports. We love yeah. it. It's so yep. cool to see. I learned this, not even from us. I learned this from so-and-so commentator. So mm-hmm. then I tried it from your guys' podcast. Yep. And now I won. Thank you, so-and-so, for that comment from that strategy. Yep. That's what these are for. Yeah, but these guides have always been for level six. Yep. And we await you with a smile until you try it and tell us how you think. And we love hearing when you do do Yep, yep, yep. And if you don't want to, totally fine. Your board game, have at it. Yeah. But some people were commenting on why it is that we do that or whatnot. So that's our official statement on the matter. (laughs) TDA comes back to say, TDA, England 6, my absolute nemesis. Uh, I usually hey, play- wait, aren't they British? <laughs> what the heck? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I usually play two-handed, and I've had two wins and six losses. Mm. Rush for fear victory, people say, but I suck at fear spirits. <laughs> well, go back and listen to our fear episode. Hey! hey go back. <laughs> Base 150 like- fear, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we had to do two it. Two players! With non-fear spirits. I played with Base Lightning and Thunder Speaker, oh. and it was amazing. Oh, they yeah. both do lots oh. of destruction yes. early. Yes. Cleared inland towns, blocking those builds. A lucky fear card in round four, Fear of the Unseen, left one board with only two explorers. Oh, what? man. Why do I never have games like this? <laughs> Oh, that was not our game. I know, that was awesome. not our game. I'm happy for it. I also pulled Storm Swath for Lightning. Yes! What? Yes! Yes, 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 yes. And the rest was minor spam. Victory at Terror Level 2. Oh, Whoa. nice. My only other victory was Wind Lightning and Starlight. Oh. Starlight with big energy and majors. I knew it. I was about to say, uh, that was a major Starlight. <laughs> it had to build. have been. They use Cast Down into the Briny, Briny Deep. Deep without Threshold. Hey, six fear, 
man. Yeah. It was a clutch save against the capital loss, and it works so well and generates so much fear that I use it twice more on the other built-up coastal lands oh, in later yes. turns. I think that's the only time I've used cast down without destroying a board, but it was still a game changer. Hey, let's not forget that you can also make any slow fast with, with them. Who? Yeah. So you can just be like, yo! And I'm doing this now. <laughs> and I'm doing it right now. And I'm gonna reclaim that second. I'm kind of surprised Starlight didn't get a little more love. They can just sling majors like a memory or They also immense. are a good platform for major powers. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, good comment, TDA. Right on. Hey, Jeff Dugan comes into town. Oh, the Jeff Dugan. That's right. At least through level 5, which is, as far as I recall, running it through playtesting, Stone's Unyielding Defiance, when played with an exclusive or almost exclusive focus on the bottom track, is an incredible hammer mm-hmm. against the English. Just don't forget to keep at least one Sacred Site in range to use Scarred and Stoning Land. Yep. Otherwise, it should be no surprise that Green is an MVP as long as they're willing to sacrifice Presence a lot in order to prevent the builds. Round out the team with anybody who has a focus on out outright destroy effects, as mentioned, like Thunderspeaker and Ocean especially, instead of doing damage. You're right. Shadows and Finder of Paths Unseen both suffer for different reasons. Shadows because their ordinary method of board control is nullified. Finder because the typical tactic of creating one single problem land can trigger an auto loss. Yeah. I like that Jeff brought up about how much sacrificing of presence Green will have to do. Totally. Why are that? Do you think you make yourself too weak? You're losing so much presence, so many yeah, sacred sites. Okay, you can bring it back. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you can bring it back. Once you are playing against an adversary of this caliber, you do what it takes okay. to win. Floham said they got fear victory with green. Yeah. It can be seriously, done. Seriously, it can be done. JK Mushi comes back to say... Mushi! Mushi's back! JK Mushi! <laughs> 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 We're getting goofy. Okay. That's fine. J.K. Mushi comes in to say, I don't have the breadth of experience since I've been constrained more on playing Sharp Fangs for session reports I've been writing for BGG. Oh, I can't oh. wait to read those. Right on. But for Fangs, at least, I was surprised how beatable England felt. It even felt easier than Russia. How about that? Prey and the Builders is extremely strong for one energy, and Fangs has an early game opportunity of clearing out the starting inland town and preventing enough builds to actually turn off the indentured servants over multiple lands, Mm. which is a massive advantage in the matchup. Yeah. Another key element is isolation powers in Jagged Earth. These can be very strong Mm -hmm. if played on consolidated lands and choke points that can help prevent the indentured servants. Seriously? Or adjacently build in multiple lands. Very well stated. And people are saying fangs, huh? We have had yeah. a couple of fang mentions. Three damage can still take out a town. Yeah. You can do that easily. Totally. Definitely. And you're getting fear cards usually pretty reliably, so yeah. you are stopping that stopping level the extra six. build. Yeah. I see it. Pandemonium Hard comes back. Welcome back. There is no better way to beat the Grand Master of Colonialism than with the Grand Master of Spirit Island itself. Mm. Serpent is my go-to for this matchup because England is the one adversary that takes long enough for Serpent to awaken. Truth. England's builds are dangerous, but with some good defense and with major slinging, Serpent can thread the needle until it reaches its awakening point. After that, you will have all kinds of built-up lands to sling cards at, or have the time to build up to that snake wake. Mm. England gets some detractors because of how long and plotting it can be, but I don't mind that personally. I like scaling with spirits and getting to use them at their full potential. And England is the best adversary to accomplish that. What an excellent point. That must be so fulfilling. Seriously, and like we said, they don't mitigate the invader deck in any way, shape, or form. At all. It's just a standard deck. Because with Brandenburg Prussia, I remember saying, I didn't get to become what I was meant to be because yeah. it was so short. Well, it is BP such a short is game. just such a hyphenated experience. That's true. So England, we were both Fully grown yeah. against England. Both yep. of us. Yeah. Fully maxed out. And that's fun feeling that powerful. Right. And Snake, oh my goodness, that would be so Having cathartic. Having them feeling that oh. powerful. Snake wakes. Oh. 12 energy a turn. Throwing oh. majors. 17 energy a turn. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. And that would, oh, oh, that'd be great. That would be great. That's a good pick. I'm Danish too. Hey, <laughs> we're having so many people come back. I love it. I love it. 
I love England, kind of like Pandemonium Heart said. It's hey. probably the most satisfying adversary to beat since mm. they are so dang tough. <laughs> <laughs> I especially like playing them on the Steam app where you don't have to worry about getting all those builds right. That's a good point. Yeah, true. It is like, be like, did we build there? Is that it, yeah. Jason? Did I already build here? Yeah. The Steam just is like, took yeah, care of you, fam. Yeah, and now Spirit Island is available on your phone. Oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> that's dangerous, yeah. The recent community challenge on Reddit was True Solo, Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares versus England, and I was surprised how good the fear guy is in this matchup. Mm -hmm. I earned eight fear cards in one turn. Nice. Wow. Blitzing straight from mid-terror two to a fear victory before the final stage two invader card was revealed. Easiest win ever. Whoa. Nice. I want to try that. Nice. Other good solo spirits versus England are Thunder Speaker, Lightning, and Ocean. Extra mm. health doesn't matter with these spirits. You can just destroy buildings. Yep. I imagine Vengeance is good too, but yeah. I haven't tried it. Okay. Probably one of the best pairings is Ocean and Lightning. I feel it. Ocean feeds Lightning energy. Lightning takes care of the inlands. You don't have to worry about the double high immigration build since both spirits consistently generate a lot of fear. Yep. And it's relatively straightforward to create safe zones in Inland. Yeah. I thought that the worst pairing would be Finder and River, but Cottage in the City proved that wrong in the Give Me a Game I Cannot Win challenge. Eric Royce talked hey. about that challenge when our interview with him, where he easily took down England 5 plus Brandenburg 0 in this pairing. Mm. Think about that pairing. <laughs> Finder. Give them a game they can't River. win. All right. Every adversary, level 6, base shadows alone <laughs> on a full neoprene player mat. Whoa. With events. Whoa. Starting hand only. <laughs> we'll see Go. if they can do it. Go ahead, Cottage. Do it. Anyway. If you do it, I'll give you my inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the comment. I'm Danish, too. <laughs> Final attack comes in and says, With my partner, we have beaten England 6 with Ocean's Hungry Grasp and Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares. Hmm. It was pretty hard, but breaking its back with Indomitable Claim. Yes, defend 20. And you can get into some fun Ocean Presence Placement shenanigans with that one, too. You can go further inland with it. Yeah. Wow, it's fun. that's cool. Not something we'd want to try too often since it burnt out both our brains. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. Laura had it with Russia. Trust yes. me, I get it. Yeah. I can't imagine it being easier with other spirits. Ocean helps. Ocean, Ocean helps. helps. Ocean yeah, helps. it really depends on a lot of your luck events. Sure, you know, I would say pull. Thunder Speaker, but Thunder Speaker can be both like saved or destroyed by, by events, the events. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Mask Field comes in to say. Mm. No one ever talks about Starlight in these, so I'm going to say that a major... Quite right, actually. Quite right. A major focus Starlight has no problem yeah. ramping up for yep. consistent damage against England. Yep. If it we see Starlight here, it will be major power yeah. Starlight. <laughs> I don't think you're going minor spams with the Starlight or defensive so. builds. <laughs> England doesn't do anything tricky with the Ravages. It just makes them worse due to all the builds. So a slightly slower start is more than made up by a powerful mid-game into a crazy late-game play for this spirit. Mm -hmm. Plus, token spam is highly accessible for Starlight, and Disease is a great token to have spread throughout the island. Yeah, Diseases are great. Ooh, they break down some stats here. I like this. Oh! 44 out of 67 major cars have damage on them. Mm. So if you don't draw in any two draws of four, which is typical by turn three or so for Starlight, congratulations, the odds of that are 0.008%. Dang. Bad luck. So what they're saying is, Dang. you have a high, high chance of pulling a damage major. So go for it with Starlight. Seriously? I like I like that. I like I dig it. Thanks for the stats. They finish out by saying, love the podcast. Please, please do a series about the all-rounder spirits or the ones that aren't quite pigeonholeable in the same way as the all-star spirits tiers were. Okay. Do we have an oracle on our hands? <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Anyway. <laughs> Red Red Wine comes in and says, playing England at level six is quite a difficult task. Out of all the adversaries, this is the one that almost requires counterpicks in order to win. Mm. For you to win, you need reliable fear generation. The ability to deal with multiple lands per turn while also being able to periodically deal mass damage to one land to prevent the loss condition. When it comes to tactics and strategy, you really need to come at England with a different mindset. You are not going to be able to avoid most builds. Therefore, you need to wait until after the build phase in the land to begin dealing with it. Mm. This means that cards such as Steam Vents and Sudden ambush become a lot less valuable. Oh, I love steam vents. Wild's tokens also need to be carefully considered in order to be valuable as preventing an explorer only to have a build next turn anyway is useless. 
I primarily play solo two-handed and have found the easiest passage to victory is to clear out one board early so that you can avoid most of the extra builds and cards that target explorers may actually prevent builds. Mm. As for spirits I like for England, Thunderspeaker and Ocean come out on top, but I'll talk about a few of the newer ones. Oh, nice. Lure. Buildings have extra health is worthless when you can convert them all to explorers. Mm -hmm. Once you get a few bad lands in play, killing things is not much of a problem. I like that England will almost always be using their escalation on your kill land. Right on. That's I true. like that. I'm surprised Lord didn't get a little more love. Yeah, because of that. Trickster. Whoa. This one surprised me a bit, as I thought they would be too slow. Get to two card plays, and then run out the top track for growth, and focus on spitting out as much strife as possible. Okay, I love Trickster. It's a good pairing for spirits that take a few turns to come online, while keeping the island healthy and still doing reasonable damage. Early game, the cities will wipe out a town when attacking. Late game, with the help of a beast token, towns can also wipe out cities. Wow, okay. Many Mines. A tougher matchup than for other adversaries, but they manage to keep their board free of blight while heavily pushing for fear. Strategy is the same as most other adversaries. Use a Dahan and your Defendinate to wipe out the early cities and then maintain board control and generate fear until Terror Level 3 or a Fear Victory. So I agree with everything they said. Like, I was on board with it. I didn't think of Trickster, though. That yeah. took me aside. I forgot how Incite the Mob, yes, an Invader with Strife good. deals damage, but yeah, that three damage can still take out a town. Yep. And I like how they say Said you are basically stalling out England to yeah. let your teammate get stronger. You know, you can there's just spam a strife. lot of events and fear cards that reduce bad guy health for strife. For a strife, have. a lot of fear and cards do that. Trickster can take advantage of a Definitely. lot of those. Definitely. That's a good call. Love yep. that comment. Floham comes back to report on a battle report that they hey, had. Hey, hey, They played a game with Rolamo. Hey! Hey. Rolimo and I took on England 6. Mm. Rolimo played Foreboding Shadows. And <laughs> for myself, I played Ocean. Shout out to the KSP hey. for getting us to play England 6 and to give feedback. That's right. Also, thank you for the KSP for shedding light on the spirit shadows. Yes. I was definitely underestimating them. I love base shadows and the aspects. Some will say this is blasphemy, but I will take shadows with an aspect over Keeper any day of the week. Man. Wow. Bold words. Bold I like it. Words. I like it. I speak the truth. Do it. I have more fun with shadows. I like its range, control, consistent fear, and ability to spread its presence out easily. Yeah. I wouldn't say easily, but they can grow. <laughs> Takes them some time. I wish they had a double growth option. Yeah, well, well. <laughs> Anyways, Raleigh Mo and I dominated this game against England 6 with Shadows and Ocean. By turn 3, Raleigh Mo's board only had two explorers and pretty much remained clear of buildings the rest of the game. We would push stuff from Ocean's Inland yep. to Shadow's Coast, and they yep. wouldn't be there very long. Yep. They were drowned and or pushed. That's right. Therefore, we mainly had to focus on my inlands on my board. We won with a healthy island. Well done. Nice. We lost four blights and won with a fear victory. Four turns remaining. I like it. Ocean and Shadows have some amazing synergy. Shout out to Zenyana Master. Oh, that's also me. <laughs> 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 for making this recommendation to me when I asked about England's six advice for using Shadows. Ocean turning Shadows pushes into kills was mm -hmm. huge. For boating Shadows added even more pushes and yep. fear with the nominate a land, land. Yeah. people can get moved from that land fear push fear push at times though i miss shadow's base ability to reach any land with dahan that mm -hmm. is sometimes useful yeah. i just never liked the energy that caused it for it yeah title boon was super helpful and synergistic with shadows getting two energy let shadows go bottom track early mm -hmm. game more comfortably mm -hmm. and the extra town push and dahan helps push things towards closer to the coast mm-hmm Oh, and the Dahan can then be spit out from the coast and repositioned with favors called Dew. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's fun. Shadow's control was ridiculous. Mantle of Dread and Crops Wither and Fade helped prevent England building too big of a capital. We had one land reach five buildings the whole game. Same with us. Nice. Shadow's darkness innate helped gather explorers into the ocean, feeding it energy. <laughs> That's smart. We never hit tier three of Shadow's darkness innate. No one does. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say. But, yeah. but we did hit tier two a few times and got some fear from that. 
By the way, let's talk about fear. It was raining fear. After turn nice. two, we had at least one fear card every single turn. Nice. Oceans and eight was helping a lot. Yep. We have, <laughs> yep. We avoided every single double build from high immigration. Nicely nice. done. We also drew some cheap isolation minor powers that helped avoid adjacency builds. It was also awesome seeing shadows use that new innate to extend the zero range of a card like Quicken the Earth struggles to defend and a built up land range two away and let shadows for to Han from Favors Call 2 wipe mm-hmm. out that land. Mm. The extended range from the Foreboding Innate helped shadows reach and helped me as Ocean mitigate how much inland lands were blighting. The escalation effect never affected Shadow's board because Ralamo's board didn't have buildings. Wow. Nice. Wow. Nice. And then Ocean drew Tsunami as a major. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, Both goals oh. of lands were cleared by turn five. In the end, we knew a fear victory was the main goal. Nice. Okay, moral of the story. Shadows is OP. What? Hey. They do a smiley face, JK. But, <laughs> but, I don't think it's the worst spirit in the game. I feel that every spirit is viable. Let's stop with the shadow slander and disrespect. This <laughs> spirit is awesome, and Ocean and Shadows might be one of the best duos in Spirit Island. Aww. Wow. Well written, Floham, and I'm thank happy. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for all you said about the KSP podcast helping you try out new things, like Shadows. That's the goal. That's, That's what the we're goal, trying to do. Honestly. Because people would think maybe like Bringer and Ocean, or River and Ocean. Mm-hmm. Why not try Shadows and Ocean with foreboding? Get those extra pushes. Are they not fear. the best controller in the game? I think. Oh. <laughs> with all that fear, I see how you won so quickly with a terror victory. Nicely mm. done. And thank you for saying some Shadows love. That needs to be said more in yep. this community. Yep. You know our thoughts. We've joked about it enough. We've joked, but we love Shadows. We do. Tongar comes in and says... I inevitably get one or two turns where I generate a good amount of fear normally when playing as many mines, and then get another 8 plus fear from an event card mid to late game. I had one cheesy win where I got all three Beast Prowl fear events in a row while playing many mines and fangs. So that was 21 fear, 23 fear, and 24 fear across three consecutive turns basically made my card plays pretty much irrelevant to be honest. (laughs) Nicely done. Wow. Some lucky that can happen. That can happen. That can happen. Especially with token beast oh, users. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ralimo comes in to say, Hey! Tailing off what Floham had to say, Hey! So Floham had a pretty detailed breakdown of our England 6 game where we played Foreboding Shadows and Ocean's Hunger Grass. Mm-hmm. He told me we were going to counterpick England 6, and I was like, nah, bro, Shadows isn't a counterpick for anyone. <laughs> Turns out I'm wrong. (laughs) As long as you don't start the game with Shadow doing growth option two and also pulling presents from the battle track, this combo is incredible. In fact, it basically negates most of England's special rule by developing way too much fear to trigger double builds on high immigration and health doesn't matter when invaders flee for their lives into the gaping maw of the deep blue sea. That's (laughs) right. Thank you, Aspects. I now like Shadows again. I know the community isn't looking to me to make the overall judgment call on this, but Shadows is officially playable. Yep. You heard it here, folks. Yep. Heard what you too. just said brought a smile to Eric's face. I guarantee it. Yeah. Because they felt so bad that they let Shadows down, but that's what these aspects were for. That's what all of these aspects were for, to tweak the characters into better, more fulfilling, and just fun versions. Versions of themselves. Yeah. Now people are saying that Shadows is playable, Shadows is OP, Shadows with Ocean, one of the best combos. Mm-hmm. That's really cool to hear. For years, Upon years, Shadows was the worst D tier spirit. Yep. Hey, it got gold medal even here. For even the worst. here, but now with aspects completely new. And that's awesome. Completely different. Love reading these. Love hearing these. Hey, Eric, put the hot chocolate down. That's like your sixth cup, bro. (laughs) (laughs) You slow down. (laughs) We know you're celebrating. (laughs) Hey, T Ips comes back. T Ips. Ah, yes, England. Ominous final boss music starts playing. <laughs> Do we have like final <laughs> boss music? <laughs> I remember when I started playing Spirit Island, I was so full of myself beating Prussia level four quite confidently. Hey, let's try these English fellas at level four. That's supposed to be difficulty seven as well. Yeah. Ominous final boss music intensifies. 
I, uh, I was not prepared. <laughs> buildings everywhere! No! Oh no, our lands! Quickly stop that explorer from building! Evil English <laughs> final boss lander. <laughs> not like this! Not like this! <laughs> the Dahan have started drinking tea and eating biscuits! No, not you too! No! Then comes the scone! <laughs> I do like a good scone. Anyway, <laughs> to this day, I still get a warm feeling in my tummy when avenging myself against these cheeky wankers. <laughs> oh, Tips, are you British as well? <laughs> these cheeky wankers. <laughs> Here are a few pointers I had to learn. <laughs> Here are a few pointers I had to learn the hard way. One, you either need a lot of destroy effects or fear. Mm-hmm. Destroy effects get around their bonus health, but beware that they can still outbuild your efforts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fear gets around that since you care less about the board state and it helps prevent the dreaded level six effect. Hate that effect. Two, repeat lands can be rough since it means eventually they will have a build before Ravage. Yes. Coastal lands are particularly vulnerable to this, so try to keep them blight free as long as possible. Defense, isolation, or disease are ideal tools for this. Three, do not expect to be able to prevent builds in general. Focus on optimizing destruction or fear instead. I agree. Though sometimes isolation or a very clear inland area can sometimes prevent builds. Four, you can actually have four builds in a row in the same land if you are not careful. So keep an eye out on that loss condition at all times. We talked about last week. They do so many build actions. Yep. (laughs) Five. England actually starts out quite slow, so use this time wisely to grow a lot and set up some killer combos. With that out of the way, here are my spirit rankings based on average scores against England 6. They are all either solo or two spirits, and a few with an additional adversary. Good to know. Their greatest score with a 78.5 was Nightmare. Oh! Just make spooky noises and use your pretend damage to avoid the loss condition. <laughs> At 78, just below it, Starlight. The adversary is weak to destroy effects and or fear. Oh, if only I could handcraft a spirit to do exactly that. Huh. Thumbs up. Hmm, if only. Oh, yes. What? Look at this. At 77, Might Earth. I didn't read this ahead of time. What? Me neither. The fruity destruction combo works quite well and generates fear on top. Though they did have some help from green, so they're probably a bit lower in truth. I don't hey, know. Man. We had a good game too with Earth Might. Yeah, we did. But hey, might Earth with green? That would And that combo fun. that I'm talking about, the yep. draw fruit for Earth and then yep, the, the Fruity of- Destruction. I like that combo. I like that nickname. <laughs> fruity Destruction, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I always call it the fruitful ritual, but that's fine. I Either one it. works. Many Minds came in at 75 and a half. Yet another top placement for both Starlight and Many Minds. Wink wink. <laughs> Dear what <laughs> the rivalry continues? No! <laughs> Got me again, TFC. No. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Embrace Top the rivalry. Team. I love it. Starlight, fine. I'll concede on Starlight, but mines, mines. <laughs> all in jest. All in jest. All in I jest. love it. I love it. <laughs> Laughing emoji. All right, 75, Serpent. This matchup is a ton of fun. Mm-hmm. Hey, Pandemonium Heart agrees. Yeah. England starts out slow, and you do have options to generate some fear while you wait to awaken, at which point there are a sea <laughs> of buildings to just go ham on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, seriously. Completely there's going to be so many bad guys there. Just weapons. This adversary was made for Serpent. I want to do an England 6 with the Earth fractured, downpour, <laughs> green combo of accelerating the them so fast yeah. to just watch them go ham. Also at 75, green might actually be able to keep inlands clear enough to prevent a lot of explores and build, yeah. and your special rule can prevent sun loss condition or ravages in the most built up lands. Yeah, green is crazy good. So much hey, prevention. Hey, it's almost as if they're a top tier spirit. Yeah, hey, almost like they're S tier. <laughs> Oh, Madness Shadows at 74. The fear is nice, and the madness helps stall while you grow into a major power spirit. I talked about the inner fear episode. Yes, you did. Just use your strife to stall out and fish for majors. That's all you gotta do. Also, 74, Shifting Memory. Another build your own spirit, and additionally, many fear cards have a moon element, which helps get out more element markers to achieve the thresholds on the majors. It's a win-win. That's true. A lot of fear cards, because moon's spooky, nighttime, so a lot of them have that element, those cards. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, I was just reading. What? What's next? I was just reading the next one. Slow down. At 73, downpour. 
Oi, is that a bit of rain coming our way? Good thing I brought me umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, downpour. That's all they say. It's the flooding. Say no more. <laughs> Enough said there. Oh, I love the. I, oh, see, this is why I love doing cold reads because those are just. <laughs> yeah, I didn't so read great. that either. At seventy-two, ocean fear and destroy effects. Ah. Only thing keeping it from the top five on the list is my inability to pilot this bad boy. Hey, I feel you. My lovely wife also tells me to keep my grubby hands away from her spirit. That's Laura does to me. Sounds like Laura. <laughs> See, you two are alike. We Teams are a lot John. alike. Yeah, we both hate many minds. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. I like many minds. But you both have a wife that's better than you than yeah, playing than Ocean. ocean. <laughs> I will admit to that wholeheartedly. Thunder Speaker at 70.8. This would probably be the number one if I hadn't gotten cocky one game oh. and thrown in Russia 2 on the side. Whoa. Hey. Double adversary. No thanks. Yeah. At 70.5, Lure. What nice buildings you have there. It'd be a shame if all your citizens packed up their bags and got lost in the woods. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Downgrading into explorers. Whoa. At 70, River. Woo! Woo! Nice, River. done. Nicely done. Though, not really. Wait, what? This is, <laughs> this is just up here because I used the river and fangs combo and supplied fangs with endless energy for majors. Boon of vigor! But that is still a powerful option that River has. <laughs> So you go, little special friend. You go. It's like me saying, I can win with base shadows against England if Ocean's there. <laughs> Keeper came in at 67. Mr. Ermagerd, OP, S++++ tier. <laughs> Fails once again to deliver a top performance. Moral of the story is, don't feel bad if you enjoy Keeper. You don't have to hotfix them to have an unimpressive result. Just look at me. It, wait, wait, no. Oh, <laughs> Clown <Confaze>. emoji. <laughs> Volcano at 62. I struggled a lot with the basic damage spirits against England, and this was no exception. <laughs> Wait a minute. Volcano's really good against... Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when against England, it can really go sideways with That's a bad true. event. It can Seriously. go south fast. And quick. Yep. Missed at 54.67. <laughs> One unfortunate loss, and suddenly your average mm, score plummets. Yep. Highly unfair, but a very fun matchup regardless. The proud and mighty capital, oblivious to the fact that you're using them for a fear factory. Joke's on you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Stone at 52.33. Another fun matchup. Had to learn to plan my counterattacks well to avoid the loss condition. Yep, that's what yep, people have been saying, like, yeah. Yep. Fractured at 52, you gotta have the right cards in your personal deck and solo play. Otherwise, you get to put on a monocle and top hat while getting your cosmic <laughs> behind handed to you like I did. <laughs> Long live the queen! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Now, if you team up God with a save strong... The queen. No! No! Now, if you team up with a strong ally such as Thunder Speaker, your results will probably even outshine that of the Dahan General in solo. A very good pairing, Fractured and Thunder <laughs> Get a monocle on top hat. <laughs> Long live the queen. <laughs> now the Union Jack will not fly here. <laughs> Sounds like the planter's peanut. <laughs> Fangs came in at 50.5. The basic damage is a bit tough for me, but you do have some nice fear and other tools to help you. Very true. Yep. At the same score, Trickster, your Dahan and Beast damage is a bit nerfed, mm -hmm. and the number of bad guys who need to be striped is a bit high. However, for a strong early game spirit, Trickster can be surprisingly powerful in the late game with your many elements, card plays, and additional energy spike. And this is not the first Trickster mentioned. I want to try Trickster against England yeah. 6. Vengeance came in at 46. Oof. Is that me struggling with another damage-based spirit? <laughs> you betcha! You sound like me, TFs. <laughs> As per usual procedure against the Brits, a fear of victory ended up being the solution. Yeah. Hey, that's what we had. A win's a win. Ooh! What? How about that? Tell me. Base lightning, big guy, and panda. Oh, so pandemonium lightning and immense lightning and base at their lowest score of forty-three. Oof! Hot take. I don't think lightning solo can keep up with England's builds. Wait a minute. The book said otherwise. Yes, <laughs> you have destroy effects, but that is like two to three buildings, and England spits that up before you can even get to the ravage. Oh yeah. Now, if you add in an ally to make fast things get much brighter, hmm. I did stubbornly attempt solo twice, only to have my hope shattered. Then pandemonium lightning and Manda shadows teamed up for some strife, fun times, and fast majors to scare the Brits. Nice. All that fear too. That's right. Honestly, I think almost all of these matchups are a ton of fun, and England often takes you all the way to the very end game, mm -hmm. so you get to unleash your full potential. 
Though it's a little rough on the damage-based spirits, I really enjoy this adversary a lot. Wow. Once again, thank you so much for this fantastic podcast. Uh-huh. You guys are great and definitely my number one thing on the <laughs> interwebs right now. Oh, Wow. I very much look forward to every episode, in particular the community ones. Heart emoji. Oh, We love doing those too. TMs, I love seeing and your stuff. And we love the comments. I love the stats. Thank you so much. And I like that we're both bad at <laughs> offensive <laughs> spirit. We've you guys are comment. very much And our common. wives are better at them. That's right. It's good That's to admit right. that. And they're a Mist fan. I love Mist. Yeah, I know. I love it. Thank you, Tips. I love you. you. Many Windmills comes back to say... Hey! I know who that is. You know who that is. I know that spirits with destroy powers will most certainly be mentioned, so I'm going to venture off the beaten path and suggest Shroud Asylum Mist and Shard Fangs. Oh! Oh, You're just buttering up. (laughs) You're just buttering right up right now. Ooh, miss. Yes! Miss because of the constant fear each turn and lowering that bonus health England gets. Yeah, seriously. And Fangs because of ranging HUD has no limits on how much damage it deals. Also, Prey and the Builders becomes an MVP type card seriously. when you game. Yeah. And Ranging Hunt is a dark horse because of the max cap. Yeah. You got to take advantage of it and play into that, but seriously. Just lean into it. Go after high damage. Mm-hmm. Aggressive build, like Ryan says. As for the weaker spirits, most controllers, I would say, River, Shadows, Finder, those lot. Mm. And those all showed up on our bottom five. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like people saw this coming. Yeah, but no, seriously, Mist's ability to save the damage is still... Mist and oh. a Fang shout out. I've been oh. liking these underappreciated spirits getting yep. mentioned more. Gentle Fox comes in and says, I agree that difficulty is most important in selecting the spirit or spirits. I would add that the number of spirits in play as well. Personally, I prefer solo four to six spirit games against high level adversaries. Goodness. This allows me to pick spirits how they fit together in a team. Oh, that's cool. For example, against England high difficulty, I enjoy Thunderspeaker, River, Ocean with these two powerful teammates. Fractured Days mm. and Shifting Memory. Mm. In Fractured Days case, making slow powers into fast and then replaying them. Yes. And then Shifting Memories, it's getting those elements out there. Yeah. And any other spirit like Volcano and Serpent or other for good, powerful teammates to add on mm-hmm. to that first three of Thunderspeaker, River, and Ocean. The last three may not be so strong in a single spirit game against England at high difficulties, but as a team, they shine. I like that a lot of people have been talking about one or two duo yeah. type games. I like thinking about team synergies. Same. We're all about that here. Mm-hmm. Grimane comes in to say, huge fan of the KSP. <gasps> Thank oh. you. Thanks for all the hard work of putting it together. Thank you. Mm-hmm. No, seriously, for real, thank you. <laughs> My two takes. Vengeance. Disease is super helpful against England, giving you control over the pace of their board presence or the pace of your damage output. Can't rely on kill spots as much. No. No. <laughs> but given how much England builds, you're very likely to have a good amount of blight strewn about everywhere. Mm. Very true. And shifting memories. England is oppressive to the point I generally rely on majors to do a lot of damage oh, yeah. before yep. they become unstoppable. Shifting memory gets more majors flowing and allows more thresholds to be met with its element abilities. Mm -hmm. Definitely swinging with what you draw, but potentially devastating. Oh, totally. And then green is great to have on a team against England 6, revenge against losing to builds. But with high immigration, it struggles to carry as much as it can in other matchups. But yeah, Mm. green's always good. I do like the shifting memories call out. That's so cool. I mean, they have such a great capacity for majors. Yeah. You don't have to forget. You can gain new majors, you can get elements, and then that plus nine energy with a growth option four. Yeah. Insane. Ridiculous. Awesome. Thank you for what you said. It means more than you know. Yes, thank you. Baracko comes in and says, I've been playing England a little more lately. Always been a little intimidated by them. You just can't stop the builds. Mm. So much white plastic on the board. So much. I haven't played them against the highest difficulty yet. Had some success with Stones and Yielding Defiance because it doesn't care about Blight. And their second innate, let them break themselves against Stone, is perfect to counter all that plastic. Combined with a decent energy access for majors, which are not always necessary... It's suited pretty well for the Brits. So, Barack, I think you, you should this. go for it. You got this. You got this. And people are saying, you picked a good spirit. Stone is Stone good against is good. England. Yeah. Throw that damage back at them. Go for majors. You can do this. Mm-hmm. Get rid of blight in specific spots. Yeah. Wash, rinse, repeat. There you go. Pants are overrated. 
<laughs> right. Especially during COVID, I've been having a lot of virtual meetings, and I'm not wearing any pants. Oh, you're one of those people? <laughs> yeah, just like sitting nice. with shorts and like a I always suit. wore pants just because really? I don't want to <laughs> take any in, chances. In case you stand up or shift or something, I got my tie on and no pants. Anyway. Although your job is significantly easier to do from home than yeah. mine. <laughs> you need pants. <laughs> anyway, they're comments. <laughs> Like many adversaries, beating England is a balancing act. In my experience, playing mostly three or six spirits in solo games, high-level England is about surviving the stage two escalation effect without occurring the seven building loss condition and not letting Blight get out of control. Destruction and control can help the former with defense being important for the latter. Because England is slow, spirits with strong end games <coughs> serpent, serpent, <laughs> may get a bump up. Also, with so much plastic on the board, I found fear victories to be my most common win against England 6. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some excellent choices to bypass the extra health are Ocean, Thunderspeaker, and any version of Lightning. Agreed. Yeah. As to have strong defenders, Stallers is Serpent, Stone, Vengeance, and Green. Oh, also agree. Yep. Two spirits I consider good against England that I could use a little bit more love are Bringer and Finder. Whoa, mm. my group just calls them Hummingbird hey. for Finder. For Bringer, there's the early defense and utility aspects coupled with late game fear spikes. Sometimes you need spikes of fear generation to generate a clutch fear card mm. and avoid the dreaded double high immigration build. Ugh. For Finder, it plays a little differently than normal in that you can't just have a single land dumping ground. But Finder with Isolates and Across the Map Portal pushes is one of the few spirits that can reliably clear out an area against England. That is very true. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of any other spirit that has an oh crap button to avoid (laughs) the seven building loss condition that Finder has with the Lay Passinates. Have three towns and three cities and land about to build this turn. Finder can get that down to just three buildings as a fast power. Yep. For Spirits, I feel that struggle outside of River and Shadows. I'll risk you guys not reading this comment on air by saying miss. (laughs) Anyway, we'll edit this out. (laughs) Edit it, Ryan. Cut this. (laughs) That's fine. I'll say that I enjoy playing miss, but against the bonus health, it can at times struggle. As I think you guys have talked about, one of the keys to playing Mist is keeping buildings at one health so that, if needed, you can just wipe them all out. Boop. With the extra help, you need to spend an additional card play slash innate usage to get them to that lower health. Yeah, it's going to be just a little bit harder. Yeah, playing Mist against England 5 plus feels like playing Stone against Sweden. It takes a little extra effort, and it starts putting you more and more behind the eight ball until the adversary overwhelms you. Anyways, that all being said, <laughs> thanks for your time you put into this podcast. I'm enjoying it and looking forward to hearing it more and more. Aww. Well, I intend on producing it more and more. Thank so you. hopefully yes. we can both get what we want. <laughs> and both think that pants are overrated. Right. Ah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks for the comment. It's true I like Miz, but I look at them through the realistic lens oh, of yeah. reality, okay? You don't have rose-colored glasses. You'll admit when it's yeah. a tough... Oh, yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. But doable. Doesn't change my love for them. Yeah, you like yeah. the spirit. I mm-hmm. agree. The writer comes in and says, I don't really like England, and I won against their level six once with Ocean and River. After that, I decided not to play against them. <laughs> I hear that. That's entirely fair. Until I saw the survey and began a solo challenge with all spirits from the Steam version. Whoa. I thought to myself, how bad can England six really be? And my answer is, just bad. <laughs> Pretty bad. <laughs> But they are also a lot of fun because they force me to try out new stuff and discover new strategies. Okay. Like going for an early defend card with lightning instead of the fire element to make the most fun out of Harbingers of the Lightning. Oh. Going for an early major with River or postponing the first reclaim with Shadows to turn five. Okay, cool. Wow. Nicely done. Turn five. Here are my votes for best spirits against England levels five plus. Okay. Ocean and Serpent both have defend... Fear generation and enough energy to go for majors. I wanted my first try with both of these spirits. Yeah, I see it. Nice. Yep, definitely. Honorable mentions go to Fangs. Nice. I was one fear card short on my first try, but on my second try, I emptied the bottom track before placing any top track presence. Whoa. Took every fear power card, which also often provide you with defender control. 
I didn't pick any major powers nor blight removal and won a fear victory on a healthy island. Well, I look foolish because nice. I was saying all last episode, you have to go for majors. Yeah. And you're just like, nope. <laughs> hey, man, that's why I love these comments. Mm-hmm. Green. I lost my first game pretty close, but I drew Jungle Hungers. Hey. Nice. As my first major. What? In my second game, which meant GG on a healthy island. Yeah, yep. They're ultimate. Yep. Bringer. Nice. Nice. Against England seems to be a walk on a knife edge. Mm-hmm. You have great fear generation, but the loss condition or blight can be difficult. In my third game, I drew Volcanic Eruption on turn one. What? It's fun to save up energy, blow up a land, push the three towns into a land with a city which is about to <laughs> double build next turn, and then reclaim the card and blow up this land with three stations, three towns for the whole terror level and immediate win on turn five. <laughs> nice. Well done. Three cities. Nice. 15 fear. Oh my goodness. Dang. These spirits can struggle against England levels 5 plus. Here we go. Base River. <laughs> okay. Even my strategy based on Vigor of the Breaking Dawn card. didn't work when I finally drew the card. Blight came over the island with three fear tokens left. No. no. Honorable mentions Shadows. No. I assumed that my strategy to postpone the first reclaim to turn 5 and then alternate triggering urinate on level 2 and playing a major would do the trick as it did against other adversaries on level 6. Nice. I'm still waiting for my win, though, but I didn't vote for Shadows as it gets more hate than it deserves. Uh, That's noble. I dig it. Thank you for that. Hey, what the heck? Wildfire? Oh. I haven't won yet, but I just don't know how to play this spirit. Although the podcast delivers great advice. Hey! Nice. That's why I didn't vote for Wildfire either. Hey! hey. Nice. No more hate on Wildfire. <laughs> hey, Wildfire is not a straightforward spirit. Don't worry. Oh, I struggle with that spirit, too. Yeah. I play this game a bunch. Oh, I love it. I wanted to say thank you for the great podcast, which was one of my favorite activities during the pandemic. Aww. You also helped me to decide which spirit to pick when I'll play again with my roommates who are still learning the game or with my siblings who I will meet in a couple weeks after a year of not seeing each other. Wow. A spread of rampant green will help them get their presence out faster and generate a good amount of fear. Perfect beginner spirit. And yeah. a good amount of fun. Ah, uh, oh, great pick. Thank you so much. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you for all you said. I can't wait to hear about this game. I want you to come in back when you're able to play with all your old yes, friends. Yes, let us know how those rampant green games yeah. went. Honestly, you've done me so much encouragement just by letting me know that I've been an encouragement to you. Thank you, the writer. Light One Watch comes in to say, I really love the podcast. Oh. I binged all the episodes in two weeks. Wow. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you what, so like much. 43? Yeah. That's what? Dang. It's like work week. <laughs> nice. I dig it. So great to be able to comment for this adversary survey. Yes, oh, they caught us. One. They caught oh, us. They made it in Welcome. Time. Welcome to the present. <laughs> made it. Welcome to the present day. That's awesome. Welcome. 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 You made it. That's great. I had a really nice game with Starlight and Basel lightning against England. Lightning's building destruction is very strong against England, ignoring the extra health oh, and yeah. aiding oh, yeah. in preventing the loss condition. Mm-hmm. Lightning's only weakness is card draws, mm-hmm. but that can be solved nicely by orienting Starlight towards the plant part of its wood yes. seeks growth human seek freedom innate. Give them power cards. Give them power cards. On top of that, I also managed to draw jungle hungers with Starlight. Yes! So we've had so many And you had a hungers. plant build with oh, jungle hungers? Oh, oh. <laughs> Nice. GG. GG. Good baby. game. Hey, at least Starlight can reclaim that. Yeah. Really easy. Oh, right. and can move so we can get to any jungles. Ever. Keep moving yep. to different jungles. Yep. I have yet to play many other spirits against high level England, but I can see some of the other damaged champions like Thunderspeaker, Ocean, as well as Rampant Green using its gift of proliferation and build prevention. Yeah. Gift of proliferation is too What awesome. a good first comment. I love it. I feel as if it's like they're racing in right. <laughs> As we're about to close the door. Wait! They're like, yeah. <laughs> it's like they're just all the way on the other side of the planet. Wait! Hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 <laughs> Yeah, there's like running towards Here's it. the Doppler effect of the sound getting closer. <laughs> well, welcome in, Light One Watch. I love it. And that sounds like a real fun game of Starlight and Lightning. So and thanks for listening. Thank you for listening so much. I'm uh, afraid I can't produce 43 more episodes <laughs> in, two, in weeks. two weeks. but Neither uh, can I. <laughs> <laughs> but what can I say? I do things consistently. You have fun going back to weekly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but now you must bear the burden of the production schedule in real life and working it in with full-time jobs and moving houses and stuff. <laughs> See you on Saturday. <laughs> See you on Saturday. <laughs>
McGallard comes back and says, I haven't played much against England 6 because there's a lot to explore in the game and England 6 is extremely difficult. Yes. Nevertheless, I've done a few solo games. Okay. The spirit I was by far the most successful with was Lure of the Deep Wilderness. Wow. Wow. I won with a board clean of enemies at Terror Level 3. Nice. So basically they achieved a Terror 1 victory, but it happened to be at Terror Level 3. <laughs> Dang! The capacity to downgrade towns and cities to explorers and then not only ignore them in ravages, but also easily destroy them works amazing mm-hmm. against England. Not to mention they're able to put disease out there. I'm very surprised Lure is not ranked higher. Well, this is... Honestly? Yes. Yeah. These are what these comments are for. People at home not who voted... mentioned. Play Lure again against England. They break them down. Who yeah. cares about health? Try it, Lure again. Am, Spit out disease. I really am surprised we didn't see anything of them in the numbers. Not a mention. Not a peep. Right. Besides the usual spirits that can deal with towns and cities, and have been mentioned, I would like to say a few words about shifting memory of ages. England tends to create problem spots as consequences of the escalation and loss condition. Mm -hmm. Hence, I think majors are especially useful against them, Mm -hmm. compared with adversaries who tend to equally spread across the board, like Brandenburg, Prussia. This makes me like shifting memory against England, although you are usually dependent on the cards that you draw. But what I like is you're not dependent on just, like, one card draw. You can Mm -hmm. keep gaining cards with shifting memory. Yeah. I haven't had success with Lightning. Although they can deal with towns and cities, I feel as if it's not enough because they tend to have weaker turns. Those downturns. But I think I still have a lot to improve as a Lightning player. No, I mean, there are downturns as a Lightning player. Seriously, you gotta reload. Or you're just in a reclaim loop. Yep. It's just truth. And when you don't have a friend that can help you with it, it feels like you're just flubbing. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you have a river or someone giving you energy or something. I can imagine that vengeance could be interesting for the disease spreading, but I haven't tried that yet either. Try it out. Let us know. I think it would be great. Seriously. Family Band Solution 1. <laughs> <laughs> I like names. I love people's names, yeah. I just tried England 6 for the first time two-handed solo. Nice. Whoa, nicely done. How'd it go, how'd it go, how'd it go? <gasps> I never really played England, but after reading the card, my first thought was focus on control and prevent the builds. I went with Foreboding Shadows and Starlight hey. since I had a really great control game with them in the past. But not versus England. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, the control, I'm like, uh-oh. 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 OMG, I got spanked so hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I had a ton of cards that push invaders around. But once they started building into lands without invaders, it quickly didn't matter since every land became overrun. Yeah. I quickly realized that all of Starlight's innates with fire and two damage capabilities are powerless and with the extra health on buildings. Sorry about that. <laughs> Not sure what my next pair will be, but I'm thinking green or stone, Ooh. mist, maybe wildfire. I just need to do more damage overall. Yeah. But huge fan of the podcast, guys. Aww. I just started re-listening to the Adversary series Ooh. and decided to start taking them all down one by one yes. after listening to your tips. Yes. Already taken out level six France, yes. Sweden, yes. and level four Russia. Mm. And I'm excited to hear what you have to say about England. Oh, I hope you like what you've I hope been you hearing. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, hope I hope you like, you like what you said. Like... And I hope you like these comments. I agree. That is awesome. I agree. So learning... They kind of learn the hard way, but control is kind of not so good. That's how we learn. That's how we all learn. You learn by failure sometimes, but then you learn to get better. So Mm -hmm. I agree. I think your team of green stone, mist, and wildfire, Mm -hmm. that can do damage. Mm -hmm. That can stop builds. That can stop blights. That can do fear. That's a good team. That four-person team, go with that. Mm -hmm. Green, stone, mist, wildfire, done. Making mistakes and failing is not where the problem is. Failing to learn from your mistakes Mm -hmm. is where the problem is. Yeah, they're learning that they need more damage. So you're doing just fine. You're doing great. Thanks for the comment. I love it. Ewak comes in and says... Ewak? Ewak 16. Oh. To be specific. I'm going to offer a dissenting opinion and say that Finder is a lot better against England than the poll would suggest. You could collapse for me? (laughs) The isolate power helps prevent a lot of buildings, and you can keep your board under control pretty easily. It just needs to be paired with a heavy hitter that can generate a lot of fear or damage. So here's what's up. What's up? Usually with isolate powers, it's a guessing game because you don't know where they're going to explore. Right. Now with England, you know where they're going to build. Yep. If you stop that, that power becomes stronger. Seriously. I know you're weak with no fear, no 
damage. Right. But like they said, pair them with a heavy hitter. I like what you said, Ewak. Maybe I am biased because I love Finder, but mm. isolation becomes so much stronger where you know what they're going to do that action mm. in one land. Mm. There's my thoughts. The final comment of the final analysis wow. of the last adversary in this series. It better be a good comment. <laughs> goes to Mads6884. They're back! Mads is back, you mad lad! You mad lad! Alrighty. Close us out, Mads. Close us out. Bring us home. I don't think that I can add much to the general discussion. All right. All right. See you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's been fun. All right. It's been fun. All right. All right. All right cool. Catch us next week. Jimmy Follow food. us on our socials. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye. Yeah, cool. Uh, try to shut the door behind us. <laughs> oh, man. It's so cold out here. <laughs> it is so hot in the studio. Dad, get it. We're back. All right, we're okay, back. Okay, fine, Matt. <laughs> I don't think that I can add much to this general discussion about which spirits shine and which spirits struggle against England. So instead, I will talk a little about Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares mm. and how they do against England in my experience. Since Bringer made it to both the bottom and the top five, hmm. clearly people have different experiences with them. Personally, I rate Bringer as a great spirit against England, but I certainly do understand the argument arguments against them and agree that if they get a eh, meh game, then the team gets a bad game and it's probably a loss. Yep. It has been discussed previously on the podcast that Bringer has the potential to become a mediocre defend and utility spirit and that this might happen more often than them becoming the, wow, I just got 20 fear spirit. So how do we combat becoming a defend Bringer and unlock their full fear potential? It's all in the majors, more or less. Okay. My strategy with Bringer is almost always the same. Go top track, get some good majors, sling some fear till the invaders run away. That might not come as a surprise, but what is a good major for Bringer? Surely it's a fear generator like Terrifying Nightmares or Paralyzing Fright. <gasps> Actually, these I consider relatively weak for Bringer, mm -hmm. as they don't utilize their special rule. And frankly, Keeper or even Earth are probably even better spirits for those cards. Yeah, I like that. Actually, Earth is a very good spirit for Paralyzing oh, Fright. Yeah. Yeah. What you want is a major that deals damage or destroys cities, since destroying a city is five fear. That is what you're going for. Mm. And since England is so good at stacking multiple cities, the goal should be to destroy, quote unquote, more than one per turn in the mid to late game. And unless your entire team is offensive, the win condition against England is often a fear victory. Yes. Some of the majors that I find the best are land thrashes and furious pain. Your board will blight. Accept that and don't forget predatory nightmares as the elements will trigger the land thrashes and furious pain. The Wounded Wild turns on its assailants. Hey, you use it, John. I did, yeah. The first use will, quote-unquote, destroy a city. The second will destroy two, quote-unquote. And after the third, then any deal one damage card will read 15 fear or more. <laughs> Adding Badlands with Bringer is simply nuts. Yeah. It makes the whole Bringer and Shroud combo seem unnecessary. Then there's utter a curse of dread and bone. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Badlands, if you see this card with Bringer, pick it. Play it. Repeat it. Yes. I consider it the best card that Bringer can get. Simply add Badlands and do quote-unquote damage. It is so easy to trigger. Yeah. Plus, it triggers your right and eight. And it's so easy for you to play it and repeat it because you have a reclaim one option in your growth for Seriously. Bringer. All these cards can and should be played every two out of three turns. Another approach is quote-unquote destroying your entire board. Hey. Which both cast down the briny deep and draw towards a consuming void are great at. You mentioned draw last week. Yep. Triggering Briny Deep is a struggle and will probably rely on a teammate playing Elemental Boon, but it's a game-winning plan. Mm -hmm. Triggering Consuming Void is costly, but worth it. Both cards require saving some energy and are probably a one or maybe a two-time thing. But smashing 50 to 60 fear should put you close to a fear victory. Yeah, if you need two 60 fear turns, <laughs> right. you don't need more than that. What if I don't get any of those? Well, there are plenty of other good majors for Bringer, like Sea Monsters yes. or Tsunami. Yes. Forests of Living Obsidian. Yes. And if you don't hit anything useful, then keep digging. Well, one of our commenters talked about how many damage powers are in the major power deck. Yeah. You'll find them. Mm-hmm. Now the or less part, the miners. What is a good miner for Bringer? Hmm. Generally, the majors will do the heavy lifting, but you need some utility on the side that is affordable. For miners, I generally like either blight removal, since I can get messy if it's not handled. True. Simply matching elements can be fine, either for a major you got or your innates. 
Badlands, again, adding Badlands is just really good bringer. So yes. look out for those. One to two damage cards to fuel your Badland Fear Factory. Sky stretches to shore. You are going to need to get majors, and playing one fast might be the deciding factor. Also, it helps trigger Briny D. That's actually one of my favorite miners in the game because it gives you extra range to the mm-hmm. coast, which may not always be useful. It's good yeah. to have extra range towards the coast, but making a power fast mm-hmm. is huge, especially Bringer who's slinging majors. If you yeah. can make a major fast, that's big. It was funny when you were saying that. I'm like, as a wildfire, <laughs> mist, fang player, I don't care about range. Yeah, I just like I'm the realistic range zero characters. Okay, <laughs> well, sometimes you need the extra range. No, no, it was just a thought that occurred to me. <laughs> You're like, what is range? I'm always there. I'm always there, yeah. <laughs> Especially as a mist player. Yeah. Range zero? Anyway. Range zero? <laughs> What's that? What, what is that r- range z- zero? Sound it out. Was it what? Am, am I saying that right? <laughs> am I pronouncing that right? <laughs> that just about sums up my experiences on Bringer and England. On a side note, England is my favorite adversary. Wow. And the matchup against Ocean and Bringer is always a blast. As always, love the podcast and keep up the great work. Thanks, man. Right back and at you. What a breakdown of Bringer, huh? Seriously, I gotta try some of that. It is so true. Just go top track. Don't even look at that bomb track. Stay at two card plays and go for majors. Mm. There are a lot of heavy hitting ones in the deck. You'll probably mm-hmm. find one or two throughout the game. And you can reclaim them with your reclaim one option. I need to find Badland ones more. That's so yeah. smart with Bringer. Yeah. Triggering that damage. Seriously. Makes it so much that better. That gets you right over the threshold of getting two damage to three mm-hmm. on a city, or in this case against England, three damage to four to get that five fear. Five fear against England? Pivotal. Hey, you, you want to record this down? You want to copy paste this and cross reference it with Mr. Wolf's Bringer advice? And then you and I can use that to oh, go into yeah. our Bringer and Mist games this that we want to try? Yeah, I want to try that so bad. To Mist use that game. proverbial free time that we keep hearing about? <laughs> <laughs> we keep talking about it. Haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Oh my word, thank you guys for all the comments. This episode was hilarious. Hilarious. So many it. kind words. I know, thank so you. So many everyone. kind words. I don't even know what to say. Yeah. Just thank you, I guess. It seems so simple just to say thank you, but I mean it seriously. Thank you so much. I'm just happy that we all can agree that Mines is not an S tier spirit. <laughs> I will let that die. <laughs> 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 Anyway, that's why I learned from this whole episode. Anyway. That's why I learned from this whole adversary series. <laughs> that's why I walk away with. <laughs> TMs, I hope you're laughing. <laughs> anyway. You two just go at it back and forth. Anyway. Oh, I love it. Anyway, no, I oh, I love the community integration with these. I just have so much fun mm-hmm. and it brings me so much joy and a smile to my face to hear and see that you all thought the same and think the same about how much fun these are too. I really hope that you've enjoyed the adversary series from the bottom of our hearts. A lot of work, a lot of time. It's been a lot these. of time. Yeah, I remember when we thought it was going to be a seven episode thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, Here we are. hey, we roll with the punches in this real life. We of thought ours. it was going to be quick. Yeah, we did. But because of your comments, your feedback, what a ride! Yeah, thank what you, everyone. A ride, thank man. you. You're the one who got us to this point. Yeah. Man, it literally could not happen without you. Yeah. And none of the future ones can't either. This is a collaborative team effort. And I just feel it growing and more yep. people commenting and yep. more people rushing in after listening for two weeks yep. or re-listening. Right. We thank you for just being part of our little Spirit Island community, helping each other grow, right. become better players. At its base, the biggest reason why we are named the way that we are is because we're just two stupid dudes <laughs> that love this board game and have fun talking about it. That's it. And that's what we're doing. In that way, we are all kindred spirits. Mm. That that is the namesake of this podcast, and I don't ever want that to go unknown or unmentioned. Mm-hmm. I want that notion to be well understood within the people that listen. You listening are a kindred spirit. Yep. I love it. <laughs> what better way to close out this adversary Riding series? off into the sunset. That's right. So what's next? What new horizons will we discover? What things shall we discuss? Well... I guess we're all going to have to figure that out together. It's not tearless. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, we'll get there too. We'll Carrot the end of the stick. <laughs> <laughs> we can't give away all our secrets. Yeah. <laughs> but stay tuned for all the fun things that await us in the future. Yes. To answer the question, though, to give you some short-term things to look forward to, we are going to do a wrap-up episode. Mm-hmm. I want to go and look at this whole adversary series as a whole. We're going to look at some broad statistics and see just some of the fun, interesting information that we have and see who made it here, who made it there. What power just, cards got mentioned? Yeah. Jungle Hungers type yeah. of thing. Yeah, and we're going to go ahead and look at just the rankings here, the rankings there, the gold medalists, the bronze, the Weighted silvers. rankings. Yeah, we're going to look at all the statistics and we're going to look at it from a big box yeah. perspective now that it's all done and we're going to compile all the stats and that kind of thing. So that may take some time to do, but I think it's going to be worth it. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be good to just look back as we close out this adversary analysis series. Wow. And who knows? If there are future expansions and more adversaries that come, you bet your bottom dollar we're going to go and bring them right back. You get the idea. But, I mean, hey, that's just kind of the reality of it. We are doing a podcast in the present. Mm -hmm. If future things come up, like Spreading Rot came up, you know we're going to totally go back and be like, okay, we got to look at this for a second and analyze that. So if a new adversary shows up. Make Spreading Rot playable. Make it playable. I have to say it. Thank you. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Spreading Rot. Make it playable. Spreading Rot. Make it official. Official release. (laughs) So, yes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's been grand it's been grand thank you all seriously i don't know what else to say until next time we will catch you on the flippity flip this has been ryan i'm john and we are signing off peace out peace out hey everyone editing ryan here i have a unique kind of announcement for you today i'm going to give you a little glimpse behind the scenes Here at the KSP, we aim to produce 60-minute episodes that are released weekly. Obviously, this is a guideline and not a strict mandate. We've gone both below and above that threshold many times. It's just what we aim for, generally speaking. With our schedule in our real lives, with full-time jobs, school, theater, volunteer work and the like, it is comfortably easy and doable to fit in the production of 60-minute episodes on a weekly basis. These past few weeks, however, have been slightly unusual because episodes 44, 45, and 46 were all two-hour episodes or longer. In the editing process, the length of an episode gets cut down from the initial raw recording. So, for example, this episode was two hours and three minutes initially, but after the editing was done, it came out to one hour and 43 minutes. The editing process had shaved off about 20 minutes from the episode. This is a common occurrence when an episode goes through the editing process. The reason why I bring this up is this. A two-hour episode takes a considerably longer amount of time for me to edit than the one-hour episodes. Obviously, this is because it's literally twice as long. This is fine in my opinion because I would hate to split up those two-hour episodes up into two halves, as I think that would be too jarring to just stop a line of thought or a good conversation once it gets going. I like having complete thoughts in one episode that you can listen to from start to finish in one go. While still technically doable in a week's time, it makes my personal life much more busy and tightly packed to do two-hour episodes as opposed to one hour. It allows very little free time for me. This is all part of the job and I understand that, and I love doing it, but I'm also not here to kill myself and sacrifice my other affairs. So where am I going with all this? Well, we've gone and recorded the Adversary Series wrap-up finale episode, and it came out to a whopping three hours. I'm going to do my best, but I really don't think I'll be able to get that all completely done in the allotted time that I usually have. So, in light of this, it looks like the finale wrap-up episode will most likely release not next week, but rather on the first weekend of August. It'll be a little dicey for me as I will be out of town that weekend, but I think I can have it done by that time. Don't be discouraged, however. With the Adversary series behind us, we are in the middle of transitioning and preparing for our next series. And next week, we'll release a small 4-5 minute announcement PSA, much like this one, conveying where we intend to go next. So, in review, there won't be an actual episode next week, but you will hear from us and you'll learn what we have planned. Then, after that, the following week will be when the massive finale will drop. We hope this is all understandable and I hope you enjoy what's upcoming. I'm very much looking forward to it all and I hope you understand what we're working with and how this show fits in with our daily lives. That's all for me today. Until next time, though, I wish you all the best. And remember to stay safe. Stay healthy and stay awesome.